Hello everyone. Thank you for the visit today. I have been getting requests to talk about my near death experience. So that's what the video today is going to be about or the discussion. Um it happened December the 13th, 1999, and in order to talk about this near death experience, I have to begin from the prior day, which was December the 12th, Sunday, December the 12th. I was preparing for the next day so of work. So my daughter and I went to one of those office stores and I had made plans to clean my desk off and get organized. I was a utilization review nurse at one of the trauma centers in LA. And the night was such a peaceful night. My daughter, you know, she was a teenager and going through some stuff. So I just told her, oh, write down everything you want to be forgiven for. We'll put it on a piece of paper, tear it up, and that'll be that. You have a new start. So that's where we were. Went to sleep that night, very peaceful. Prayed before we going to sleep. Husband and I prayed before going to sleep. Then he was tussling in his sleep, and I woke him up. This was... Now we're into Monday morning, and I wakened him, and then um, he said, I said, what was going on? And he didn't want to tell me about the dream, so I kept persisting. And then he told me, he said, I, well, I was standing in front of you and blocking Satan from getting to you, and every time I, um, he was like a giant, and every time I said, the Lord rebuke you, he got smaller and smaller until he got just below his knees, and that's when I had woke him up. And and so we got up and we prayed, and then as we were praying, my carpool partner, one of the carpool partners was calling, and I called her back. I didn't get to the phone in time, called her back, and she told me that she and the other carpool partner would not be riding with me and the fourth person into work so because they wanted to um, be able to ride in the carpool because uh, she had a rental car that she needed to return. So I hurried up. I said, okay, no problem. Hurried up and got ready, went to the carpool destination and picked up the uh, carpool partner. And the funny thing that we had going on with me, I always listened to because we said the driver has to be comfortable. So my comfortable thing was listening to the wine in uh, CD, tomorrow CD over and over and over again driving in and so I told her I said um um hey the, you know they're not going to ride with us today because they wanted to do the carpool she has a car she has to take back she said oh no problem so if you want to go to sleep that's fine you know I'll just listen to the cd she said no I had plenty of sleep so about five minutes after we got on the freeway there was a click and then before I could finish the sentence what was that I only got to what was the car took a hard snatch to the left, and then all I remember is that was it. It was it knocked me out, but they said I was in the emergency room. I went to um, Western Trauma Center in Santa Ana, and they said that uh, all I was saying was that, I, I smell an angel, I smell an angel. And I did remember, um, you know, after coming to and everything, smelling an angel and actually seeing right above the car but it was like the speed of light coming down from the speed of light to um I don't know I guess to prevent the car because what stopped the car from going into the ravine was a tree trunk the car landed uh backwards on the tree trunk and they kept us from going into the ravine because I probably would have drowned from being knocked out because my carpool partner said that uh, later on I found out she had said that blood was just running out of my nose. And she, and when the people came down to help, they told her, oh, you know, you guys OK? She said, I am, but I'm not sure about her. And they said, oh, well, check to see if she has a pulse. So she reached over and she said that she does, but barely. So... Here are pictures of the car, and you can see how bad it is. And if the other two carpool partners had been in there, they probably would have been dead or paralyzed. So I'm very um, thankful for that. And then um, what, hap what was happening at work was that the carpool partner um, had gotten there. My daughter had already, she saw the accident on TV, so she called in to my office to let them know that there was an accident. And the other two people that had driven in separate, they didn't know. And when they showed up at work, they go, oh, 
oh, good, you guys are here. That means that maybe the baby was, <laughs> you know, mistaken. And they said, what do you mean? And then they said, oh, um, well, the baby called and said that it was an accident. And they said, oh, my God, they're not with us. And so everybody in their office are screaming and things. But in the meantime, I was mentally in this place, a spiritual place, where I was um, not in a body, but I was um, in a place where I was. it was perfect peace. And I was communicating with God and God with me, but it was like a communication of the of the spirit, I guess, because we weren't in, I wasn't in a physical body. And I'm not sure whether that was Tuesday or Wednesday when I came to consciousness, but in my near death um, state, I was um, not connected with the earth, didn't care anything about what was going on down here as we were um, communicating back and forth. And then God was like, you have to go back. And I was like, disappointed in that. And then next thing you know, I was being pulled through like a time warp and then um, felt like I was being born again and not coming into the ugly world. And I was just like, I was so angry because I was grieving over that. And then, uh, like I was saying, I wasn't sure whether it was that the 15th, whether it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when I awoke, but every bone in my body felt like it was broken and I didn't know I was paralyzed at all, but I had a concussion, contusion, um, left clavicle fracture, brachial um, plexus, plexus injury, right wrist fracture, multiple rib fractures. I had a hemonumothorax, a chest tube, um, left um, pubic ramus uh, fracture. So I was pretty, pretty messed up. And when I woke up, I... Uh, my brother-in-law was at my bedside, but I didn't know that. I just reasoned that. I said, oh, this must be my husband because I'm pretty, I'm in pretty bad shape. And so I've got to know, I didn't feel connected to him. And I was like, yuck. I said, I don't remember marrying him, but I was like, ew. And then so I asked him, I said, are you my husband? And then his wife, I didn't see her at the end of the bed. She said, no, he's my husband. And I was so relieved at that, but, um, they had, he had sent my husband home to get um take a shower and stuff because he had been there for a while. I think he even helped with the chest tube. And then I remember, um, I didn't remember the neurologist giving me the mini, mini, mini mental exam before, but she was um, talking to me and she asked me a question. I didn't even remember the questions before, but all I remember... The question that I do remember, she said, who's the president of the United States? And then I was like, I should know this. But actually, I did not know. I could not. Here I am, this woman in her 30s, and I just couldn't tell her. But mentally, I say, I know I should know this. So I kept on going like, Ugh, uh, I'm straining my brain to try to come up with the answer. And it was as if a suction cup put the answer in my head. And then I looked at her and I said, it's Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> and she started laughing, and she said, she's back. So, of course, it was Bill Clinton, but I was just being funny. And so the um, so that Thursday, I think they took the chest tube out, which would have been the 16th. And then that Friday, the 17th, I discharged to my contracted facility, medical facility, because I was stable. So that Saturday, Sunday... And Monday was kind of a blur, but I remember the Tuesday on the 21st, the um, discharge nurse came in and was talking with my husband because now they was trying to decide, can I go home? Um, she had to do like, uh, do you have upstairs, downstairs, bedroom, uh, downstairs, so that because I was going to have to be downstairs, of course. And so I was like, I want to go home. So I think I was probably about had the mentality of a seven-year-old at that time. And I kind of looked at my husband as if he was like a father figure to me. And so I um, said, okay. So she saw me looking at, like with an anger on my face. So she motioned for him to go outside and they were discussing it outside. So I said, this is a perfect time for me to show them that I can walk and, and get around or else I'm not going to get to go home. So I jumped out of the bed. I had my chance. So I jumped out of the bed 
And then as soon as I jumped out of the bed, I was heading to the ground. And it seems like everything was slowing down because I said, oh, my God. So, okay, I got this left clavicle fracture, multiple rib fractures. Um, you know, they had taken my chest tube out in the ICU before I left Western Medical Facility and transferred to Kaiser. So now I got this right wrist fracture, all these fractures, a left hip fracture. Found out my hip was broken when I tried to stand on it. That's when I found out. So I'm heading to the floor. I'm going like, you have really messed up now. And just as right before I hit the floor, my husband grabbed me and pushed me back on the bed. And then... um. He was like, he was cracking up because he's like, all I saw was, you know, uh, butt in the air, but the the A word. He said, all I saw was butt in the air. Or, you know, I had the hospital gown on. He said, all I saw was butt in the air when I looked in the room. So I was like, oh, you've really messed yourself up now. You're going to rehab instead of going home. So I was like, okay, that's that. So that Wednesday, which was the next day, December the 22nd, I discharged to the nursing home and I arrived to the nursing home that evening. That was Magnolia Sniff and Rehab in Riverside. And the um, gentleman, the admission coordinator, gave me the rundown of the facility and my thoughts were still on the carpool partner if I'm this messed up, I just knew she was dead and they just was not telling me. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm a nurse and they're not going to tell me. And um, I was had uh, survivor's remorse and all that because, you know, if she's dead. I was driving and all that. And then so the next day, Thursday, so my head is killing me because of the concussion and contusion that, from the brain injury. So I am trying to figure out, like, how am I going to get rid of this headache, this pain? I'm telling you, if someone tells you they have bone pain, it is one of the most excruciating pains that um, I can imagine. And I never thought it would be so bad until it happened to me. Yeah, so that's how that was, and... Then I continue on. As I was saying, my pain was not controlled. And so that was uh, on Friday night, went to sleep. And then on that Saturday came around, there was a a young man who had a double shift on Saturday, the nurse that um, covered for the weekend. He did a double shift Saturday and Sunday, and I had requested for something for pain. And he didn't know the routine was just to bring me the Tylenol because I only was complaining about my head pain because the bone pain, that was something I just thought I had to live with. So when he brought me my medication, he had brought two pills, two white pills, one red pill that was clear and a round green tablet. And I had not seen those other medicines before, so I asked him, I said, what are these? And he said, oh, the red one is your colace, which is stool softener. The green one is an iron pill. I guess I was supposed to be getting the iron pill. And the two white ones are Vicodin. And I told him, I said, oh, the Vicodin doesn't work, so I'm good. I don't want that. And he looked so disappointed, cause, and I knew what that meant. It meant that he was going to have to do all this paperwork to throw away the narcotic and all that. So I just said, okay, never mind. I'll go ahead and take it. And I took the Vicodin, and that was the first day that I had pain under control. I took it. I fell asleep, perfect sleep. I woke up. And there was like a sweat stain around my body that was in the shape of, you know, how um, when someone has um, a body has been discovered in the street and they do the chalk outline, that's how the sweat outline was on my body. And I had pain relief. I started participating in rehab. So, yeah, that's um, the pain was relieved. 
and I was more active going around the unit. And one of the um, nurses saw me uh, later on at night. I was, um, I think it was um, the next day, Sunday. So that evening, I was getting a little bit, um, like going a little stir crazy, wanted to get busy. And I started going around the hospital. So let me take a walk around the rehab facility. And the nurse yelled down the hall, you're leaving Compton and, I mean, you're leaving Beverly Hills and now entering Compton. So I was going to the area, which I didn't know, but it was a dementia unit. And they were probably going to knock me down and I didn't want to take those that chance and be knocked down and have to start all this over again with all those broken bones. So I turned around, got back in the bed, and then Monday came around. And of course, now that I know the medications that I'm supposed to be getting, when I requested pain medicine, I just said I will have my two Vicodins, my cold lace, and my iron pill. And that's when the nurse looked kind of surprised. She was like, oh, you want all that? I was like, yes, I do. And since I'm doing so much better participating in rehab, and I was supposed to have been in that facility for three to four months. It turned out I was only going to be there for about a week. Because I guess I was getting around and I was kind of asking the nurses, Oh, can I review the charts? Because that's what my job was. Um, utilization review nurse. And I had wanted to kind of get back into that <laughs> arena. Of course, I couldn't look in the charts, but... I guess I was getting a little bit too nosy in the facility. So Tuesday came, they start prepping me for discharge. Got my um, outpatient rehab appointments and things ready. And I went home the next day, Wednesday. So my three to four month stay in the rehab turned into only one week. And then I did go home that Wednesday. <clears throat> and... You know, when you um have injuries to your lung or you had any kind of surgery or prolonged bed rest, you need to exercise your lungs. So usually I'm a med surge nurse. My background was med surge and dealing with patients coming out of surgery. It was routine to teach them to use the incentive spirometer. And that's um a little blue. If you ever had a surgery, that's that little... Usually there's blue plastic thing and they have a little uh, ball that you actually, you're breathing in and it's exercising your lungs to keep your lung expanding and keep you basically from developing pneumonia, keep your lungs clear. So I had one of those and my husband was like, you're not breathing good enough. He's a, um, he was a physician assistant. <clears throat> and so he said, you're not breathing deep enough. And I'm like, yes, I am. But, of course, I got um, broken ribs and everything, and it hurts. So, and I really wasn't, but, you know, I just said, oh, yes, I am. He said, no, you're not. You need to use that thing. So, I was like, I'm going to show him. So, I used that, and, ugh, yuck. The biggest um, blood, like, clump of blood, like, it's like liver, a big chunk of liver like clock came out and I guess it was from the um the old injury or the injury from my initial um uh, uh hemonomothorax. So I coughed that up and that was really gross. I wanted to vomit. But at least I was home for the New Year's and everything else went pretty fast after the New Year's. So I just continued to go to my outpatient um uh, rehab and that was my journey to healing and the um staff at work they threw me a really nice um birthday surprise birthday party when I was came home from rehab and they had all driven up because I lived at that time I was in Corona and they were usually I mean most of them was in the LA area so it was really a nice surprise and I got to share the story about smelling the angel and the prayer and all that and what we discovered was everybody that was representative, every family that was representative that was supposed to be in the carpool that morning, which was four of us, we all discovered we were all praying about the same time or someone in our family was praying about the same time. And then also one of the carpool partners, she had questioned me. She said, 
what does an angel smell like? Because she had known someone else had told her that they smelled an angel. And she said that was strange that to hear me say it and know that she also knew of someone who had said that also. But it's it's a smell that I guess if you can think of perfume that you never smelled before it's not any perfume that you've actually smelled before but it's a different smell and you just know what it is and that's I've smelled it before when I was a child and somehow I just know what it what it is and I've also had to share that story with uh one patient that was actually, he was non-compliant and he had returned to the facility and he was bleeding. He had, he was bleeding out and I sp- spoke to him that day, we prayed with him and told him about my story. And he said, Oh yeah, I'm giving my life back to the Lord. Went back the next day he had died. So I really hated that. And then also another nurse friend, she was, um, terminal had terminal cancer, and I got to also share the story. She said, Rini, tell me that story again. And I told her, and it really brought her comfort, even though she was being told by a friend, oh, you're going to get healed and everything. But that brought her comfort. So that's what I really um, was glad, even though it was a painful experience, I was glad to have it and be able to share it. So sharing those stories with those two individuals really um, stick out or sharing that experience with those two really stick out and mostly for the gentleman that was that was um non-compliant patient because he um, actually it's like you can feel it and at first I wasn't going to say anything to him but then something said hey tell him so the only thing I regret about that is that I did not get to express that to his family because I'm sure that would have brought some comfort to them to know that. And then with the the um, nurse, I didn't have any regrets in that, sharing that with her, but I was really happy to be able to share it with her because it gave her some comfort. And uh, even um, despite what a lot of time people think healing is actually getting better physically, but it's not necessarily that type of healing that you need. It's a spiritual healing, and to be comforted is um, can be better than that. Just like when the Lord had said, you know, you are healed <laughs> or your sins are forgiven when people was asking for a healing. So I wanted to um, give a shout out to a Western Trauma Center in Santa Ana. It was um, the first place that I went to. And then Kaiser was my contracted facility, Kaiser Riverside. And then after I left Kaiser, I was then um, transferred to the skilled nursing facility where I did do my rehabilitation or my physical therapy. And also Martin Luther King Drew Medical Center where I did um, talk to some of the um attendings, especially um Dr. Long gave me some good advice. And Dr. Woods also gave me some good advice with those broken bones. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment or you can email me if you want a private response. What it was like to be in that sleep state or dream state or near death, whichever one that you basically believe in. I can share Um, more of that experience if you have any questions. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully you'll come back for my next video. I try to share um, different videos, maybe cooking and different things about living, loving, laughing, just life and lifting others up. Thank you so much. And hopefully you'll be back for my next video. But I also would like for you to subscribe and also share this video with others if you think it will help. Thank you so much and have a great day. 
Okay, I forgot. I have one more ask. If you have a similar experience with a near death or the smelling of an angel, if you could please share that in the comment section, I would so much appreciate it or we all would appreciate also being able to compare that experience. Thank you so much.